Hey there, we're working on the join and split challenge. This is the last challenge in the last unit, in the last lesson of intro to Python. So congratulations for making it this far. This one was a tough one. Uh, hopefully if you got stuck, you were able to get on Google or at least make it most of the way there without having to watch this solution. And if you weren't able to make it, that's okay. Uh, just know that moving forward, as you get into the intermediate Python, as you get into the, some of the statistics, that if you are, there are going to be times that you get stuck. And up until this point, I think in most every case or, or very close to every case, we have explicitly given you all of the information, all of the tools that are going to be necessary for you to solve a challenge that we present you with. And that may not always necessarily be the case. There may be some cases where we only briefly mention something and you actually have to dig into some, some Python documentation, some Google, some Stack Overflow. You might have to copy and paste your error message to try and figure out what's going on in that sort of uh, situation. So I just wanna sort of prime everyone that yes, this challenge is harder and that's okay, that's gonna happen. And um, just be prepared to spend a little bit more time on some of the challenges coming up in the next sections and uh, understand that some of them are gonna require you to do a little bit of independent research in order to solve sometimes. But that all said, let's get to the solution. This is called the join and split challenge. It says write a function called CSV square CSV, which should take in number data in the CSV form. We talked about that in this lesson. That is a comma separated values. It wants us to square the numbers, then return those squared numbers in a uh, the original CSV format, right? It says the CSV is going to potentially contain new line characters, which we can see here is the uh, slash N that's the, uh, which should be preserved, right? If there are line breaks or new lines, we should be preserving them in the outputted CSV. Um, we're also going to say that any float objects need to be rounded to two decimal places. So uh, we have an example here, right? This takes in one, two, three, four, and it spits out a string so that is the square of one, two, three, four. Similarly, we have uh, one, five, 13 point zero, and uh, then a new line, right? So on the next line in the file, it would say 7211.1. And here again, we have those squares. We can see that 13.0 looks like that's a float with the decimal. It is returned as a float, even though it's an even number. And again, 11.1 squared, this is rounded to two decimal points and returned as a float. So we just need to make sure that we take care of that. First thing we're gonna need to do uh, it's just CSV SQR underscore CSV. And we're just going to take in a single string as our parameter. Now, the first thing that we need to do is I need to say, uh, I'm going to have a new list of lines. I'm going to sort of work through this CSV file line by line after I've ripped it apart, squared everything, you know, taken the strings after ripping it apart, turned them into numbers taking the square of them, turning them back into strings, putting them back into one big string. Um, I'm gonna save that as a line. Then once I've got all my lines in a greater list, I'm gonna join all those lines together and I'll have a file that's like my original CSV in a string. So I need to collect those lines in an empty list. I'm gonna call that new list lines. And I'm gonna say for each line in my string dot split, and what I want to split around here is the new line character, right? We're splitting each line apart on its own. And I'm gonna go ahead and say that for each one of these lines in the original file, I am going to uh, make a new line, right? So I'm gonna have an empty list for that as well. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna iterate through each one of my lines and I'm gonna say for value in line dot split and this time I'm dealing with my values those are separated by commas so I'm gonna split by the comma so each value is going to be a number right although it's not a number we know that dot split always returns a list of strings 
So the first thing I need to do is get these into uh, proper number format. We said we have to deal integer, we have to deal with integers and floats separately. So let's figure out how we can determine whether or not one is an integer or float, right? You might think uh, if type equals integer, right? But they're all strings. So none of them are going to be floats. None of them are going to be ints. We can't use that type function approach. But what we can do is we can say if dot, if there's a period or a decimal place in my value, right, then I know it's a float. So if that's the case, I'm going to want to say new line dot append. And I am going to, we're dealing with a float. It said we want to round that float to two decimal places. So I'll get that round in there. And I will want to parse it as a float. And square it. Right? So I've taken the string val. I've determined that it is representing a float. I'm then parsing that val into a float and squaring it rounding that squared value, whatever it is, to two decimal places. And then I'm appending it to my list for the line. And then we would be able to move on to the next value in my list of values. Now, I can just go else here and say, if it's not that, if it's not going to be a float, then I know it's going to be an int. If it's an int, I don't need to worry about any rounding but I can just go ahead and square that and make sure that all of my parentheses are paired here. Um, yep, looks like I'm good there. Right, so here, right, I'm saying, oh, that doesn't have a period in it, so that is going to be an integer. I'm gonna cast it to an integer. I'm going to square that integer and then append the result to my line. So once I've actually gone through all of the values in this one line, I wanna go ahead and put them back together. And to do that, what I'm going to do is, um, I've actually maybe made a mistake here. Let me just think about this for just a second. Um, I'm gonna to wanna to turn that back into a string. Yeah, I'm on the right path here. I'm on, I have a place to collect these, right? New list lines. I'm going to want to append this new line. But again, right, I'm going to want to append a string here. Um, and you know what? Just to maybe make my life easier, I'm going to do that up here in this step. Right? I'm going to make sure after I've done the math, I actually parse those back into a string. That way, I'll, my new line right, the list, which is the called variable new line, is gonna be a list full of strings, and I can use the dot join method to bring those back in together into a single string, which is what I wanna do here. So I will not need string. I do want to, we're talking about a line here, I'm gonna to wanna to join those together with a comma, use the dot join, and we are joining new line, right? So that will take care of line by line, putting together in this new uh, new list lines. And then the last thing that I have to do is that I will now need to actually, um, I'm just realizing this might be a touch small. We'll zoom in, better late than never. Um, the last thing, right now I'm gonna have this list uh, full of strings, each string representing what I want to be one line of my file. And I want to return that but I'm not asked to return a list. I am asked to return a single string with some new line characters, if they were there in, in the beginning. And go ahead and do the, the dot join and new list lines in my dot join. And then I always leave, it's always good practice. It's a convention to make sure that you leave an, a blank line at the end of your file or your function. Go ahead and give that a test. We can see that's correct, right? There's certainly other ways to do this. Um, you know, maybe someone wants to do this part um, separately, 
right? I could maybe have just said, um, right, if it's a dot, then I'm going to say um, num equals float of val, right? And then else num equals int a val, right? And then Right, get rid of these so they're not there. And here, right after I've done that, I could do my appendation here. I could say new line dot append, and I'm gonna be appending a string, right? I could just round everything, even though I know that my integers are already gonna be rounded. Um, and what I could be rounding is val squared into a string. And right, so slightly different. I've turned them into a float, done my append, in a different place. Uh, looks like that actually didn't work. Um, power for string and int. Duh, 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 duh. Oh, I used val here. We're gonna wanna use num, not val, after I've changed it from val to num. Right, and I can see that works as well, right? I think this is actually a little closer to the sample solution than the one that I showed you, but there are more than one ways to do this. So I hope that makes sense, both a little introduction about things are going to be getting harder, you're going to have to be using Google a lot, get used to that. And um, also, this is uh, a pretty challenging challenge. It's the last one of the whole uh, little intro to Python course. So I hope it makes sense now that we've had time to break it down. And I look forward to, to seeing you in Intermediate Python in our next video.